Man, this might be the best chill that money could buy, man. If you ain't got one, you better get you one, man. If you need one, let me know. Don't worry about the laundry. I'm doing laundry, guys. I mess with this chill. What's up, YouTube, man? We're back with another video, man. Hey, real quick, man, if you haven't done so already, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, man. This this episode today, man, we're going to have a lot of reaction to this, man. So, before I review what I came across today, man, the news article I just read, I want you to understand, I love everybody. This ain't got nothing to do about where you're from. These are just simply what's been documented and what's known to be fact in the recent months. Let's get into it. All right, guys here we go man let's get right into it man this article is from my good people over at freight waves man via my buddy my best friend lombard trucking man he made a statement about this man he put up a post of that i said i could not believe what he posted so i had to come check it out and share it with my folks man all right man the website is freightwaves.com again the website is freightwaves.com now let's get into it all right, guys, U.S. carriers illegally hiring Mexican drivers to haul loads, sources say. All right, YouTube, I don't know if this is true. I wouldn't doubt it, but when I did work for Melton, we used to see them come across the border all the time in El Paso, and I would talk to a few of them guys, and they was going way to Memphis and whatnot. And, hey, I didn't know nothing. I didn't think nothing of it. But now times is bad. This is crazy. Trucking company owners urge investigation of possible cabotage rules violations gary reed the owner of a small south texas trucking company says he's fighting to survive against other carriers who continue to misuse mexico-based b1 visa drivers to deliver loads point to point within the u.s reed whose name has been changed for this story spoke to freight waves on the condition of anonymity out of fear of retribution as Freightways reported in March and April 2021 in several news stories, trucking and transportation operators in the U.S. and Mexico have been violating capitalized rules by misusing foreign B-1 visa drivers to deliver loads within the U.S. Capitalized rules prevent foreign nationals in the U.S. on a B-1 business visitor visa from competing with U.S. truckers on loads moving point to point in the U.S. The regulations are meant to protect drivers in the U.S. trucking industry. Reed and other trucking industry stakeholders told Freightwaves that the misuse of Mexico-based B-1 visa drivers creates unjust but significant savings to U.S. carriers that set up outsourced B-1 drivers' fleets at lower costs. The trucking company owner said the misuse of B-1 visa drivers has gotten worse since the Freightwaves first wrote about it three years ago. Even more trucking companies in the U.S. are employing Mexican B-1 visa drivers to undercut trucking rates in the industry while paying Mexico-based drivers less than the U.S. truck drivers, he added. It's definitely evolved over the last several years. Now I'm seeing more U.S. companies open a division in Mexico to get drivers with B-1 visas and use them as drivers in the U.S., Reed said. I think that, that, is, that, I think that this is the next evolution in this. Now you see U.S. companies that have figured out how to get a paper company set up in Mexico. Wow, guys. Wow. A Mexico-based driver with a B-1 visa can pick up a load in, in a Mexican city such as Nuevo Laredo, which sits across the border from Laredo, Texas. The B-1 driver then takes that load across the border to Laredo. That's legal. The driver can either deadhead back to Mexico or or take another load headed directly back to Nuevo Laredo. Instead of returning to Mexico, however, B-1 drivers are often hired by companies to pick up new loads and go further into the U.S., often taking work for less pay, which is illegal. Reed said carriers with divisions in Mexico sometimes put U.S. and Mexican license plates on the vehicles to allow them to put either a U.S. or Mexican driver in the truck. It's just depressed rates, Reed said. Look on the load board. You can just punch in South Carolina to Texas or Georgia to Texas. 
you're looking at 90 cents to a dollar a mile and these are the guys that are using b1 visa guys they price it they price it that way because who else is going to do it at that rate the B1 guy goes out to Georgia and back on the cheap. But the carriers that's in Atlanta, for example, don't understand why rates are really, really low going to Texas. This is the reason why, because these trucking companies will take whatever they can get back here because they have to. It's artificially blowing the rate model for everyone else that may maybe doesn't really understand why. Cabotage violations have been going ongoing for years. While it's difficult to precisely assess how many carriers are involved in the practice of irregularly employing drivers with B-1 visas. A 2019 study commissioned by the Teamsters alleges that the practice became widespread in the Wavo Laredo 20 years ago. The first large B-1 fleet began to appear in the Wavo Laredo in the mid-2000s, and the number of B-1 fleets and outsourcing setups has grown. According to the Teamsters report by Empire LLC, a Mexico City-based research firm, Empower LLC has not obtained reliable data about the total size of the labor market for B1 operators, but there are several open and closed Facebook groups that serve as a job form for B1 drivers with thousands of members. The most active of these has over 11,000 members. Wow, guys. And is almost exclusively frequented by employers and drivers based in the Wavo Laredo and Laredo, according to the report. While the teams of study from employee Empower LLC focus on Laredo and the Wavo Laredo, the practice of misusing B-1 visa trucks has been alleged in many other cities along the Mexican-Canadian borders. Several people have been contacted by freight waves by similar misuse of B-1 visa trucks drivers across Texas and Mex in New Mexico. A longtime truck driver who worked in the oil and gas industry told freight waves that the misuse of B-1 visa drivers was also widespread in the Permian Basin in West Texas. Wow, guys. Could you imagine if the B-1 drivers infested tanker and oil? Man, oh man, all them drivers would go to crap. B-1 visa abuse causing shortage of truck drivers in Mexico, experts say. Cross-border trade operators said that when a trucking company breaks cabotage regulations, it isn't just hurting the U.S. trucking industry, it's also hurting the freight industry in Mexico. In Mexico, many of the best truck drivers who have a B-1 visa get jobs in the U.S. because the U.S. companies pay more than they make south of the border. Cross-border companies such as us don't have issues with manning our trucks on the U.S. side of the border, but we do in our Mexican division. Gerardo Alanis Barrio, CEO of Cold Chain Solutions in Laredo, told Freight Waves. Alanis Barrios and other members of his family operate a group of companies unofficially called Grupo Alianes in Laredo and just across the border in Nuevo Laredo. The companies include transportation, cold storage, dredge, customs, and logistics operation. Grupo operates over 500 tractor trailers in Mexico and about 25 in the U.S. We are having a lot of issues with keeping and retaining drivers, keeping our fleets on the road in Mexico. The shortages are due to B-1 drivers. They can come into the U.S. and make 30-40% more, so you can't compete with that in Mexico. The driver just has to get a B-1 visa to get authorized and they can drive in the U.S. In 2022, the salaries in Mexico average around $4,400, according to the figures from data of Mexico and country's Ministry of Economy. Mexican drivers earn very widely by location, the type of cargo van driven, the size of the company, and the, and the sector they were employed in. On the low end of wages were drivers of cargo cars, vans, and raboons, or short bed trucks. While long haul driving and double tractor trailer drivers can earn up to 45,000 pesos a month, which is $2,379. In comparison, data from the American Trucking Association found that the average U.S. truck driver made more than 69000 including salaries and bonuses in 2021. Alana's Burr said that it's not just money that often attracts Mexican B1 visa holders to the U.S., but also safety. Truck drivers in Mexico, especially long-haul drivers, often face challenging working conditions and security issues that, as they transport goods. <laughs> Bless you. Mexico's national public security system said cargo theft in 2023 increased 4% year over year compared to 2022. Wow. Including 7,862 cases that involve violence. At least 50 truck drivers have been killed on the country's roads by cargo thieves since 2023. According to Mexico's National Chamber of Cargo Transportation. During the first two months of 2024, 
Over 1,300 cargo incidents were recorded in the country. To start off, security is a big issue. One solution that needs to be worked on in Mexico. No parent wants their son to become a driver anymore because they don't really want them to get shot at it on the road in the middle of nowhere. Alanis Barrio said Kanaka and the other trucking associations can work to dignify the profession. The industry in Mexico needs events to show that driving can be a family business. Have events where you can take somebody. Let's say your dad is a driver and the son is going to see him in competition. It gives them a sense of pride that signifies his professional job. Another issue in Mexico is lack of truck stops or places for drivers to rest and get something to eat. They need, they need more infrastructure in Mexico. Better restrooms. Here in the U.S., every 30 to 40 miles, you will see a pilot flying J or a Love's truck stops with clean restrooms and warm foods. They don't have that in Mexico for the most part. Wow, guys. Wow. All right, guys. After reading that article, I don't know how true it is or how much it directly affects what's going on in the load boards, but it's safe to say that's a good. That's one of the reasons why. When they said taking a load from Georgia to Texas and it's that low, it only makes sense. Who else is taking these loads at $90 a mile? It's no way an owner operator is taking it. So, you got to excuse me, I'm sick. So, you look at it from that perspective, it opens your eyes and think, damn, how many times have I seen a, a, a truck with Mexican place on it? I've seen them a lot of times. I've seen them way up in Alabama and Carolina and all that. I'm like, man, are they really taking a load from the Wave of Laredo to Charlotte? Who knows? They might be going to pick up something else. So, when I see stuff like that, dude, that, that's going to be the new trend because it's hard to pinpoint who's doing it and who's not. You can't really prove it unless you know somebody that tells you. So, all I can say is, man, pray for the trucking industry. Uh, that's crazy, y'all. That is crazy. I never thought of this. The B1 drivers from Mexico run, running down the, the race, but... I don't know, guys. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment. Drop a comment below. And tomorrow, I got another big news update for y'all. I'll see y'all on the next one.